Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, we're back for the next topic here, which is simplifying radical expressions. Uh, now, a radical expression is something that's got a square root, cube root, fourth root, whatever. That's called the radical. So, um, these things contain radicals here. Now, we've got a couple properties we're going to look at. The first one is multiplication. So, you see here this property says, if I have the square root of A times B, I can split that apart and take the square root of A and then multiply that by the square root of B. And whatever those become is our solution. Now that works out, you can see here in this example, I've got the square root of 36. Well, 36 is 4 times 9. And I can break them down to those. You can usually break them down into anything. We like to try and keep them square or perfect squares if possible, which 4 and 9 are. So the square root of 4 is 2, square root of 9 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, which the square root of 36 is 6 also. So that's kind of a proof of that that property works. So in solving some problems, here's what we're going to look at. So I've got the square root of 80. Now we want to simplify this. We don't want to put this in our calculator. Our calculator will give us a never-ending decimal. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for a real uh, number to pull out if possible, and then the irrational can stay. Um, so we want to look at something where if I were to take the square root of 80, a perfect number goes into it. And 4 goes into it, yeah, so I could use 4 and 20. But if you think about 20, 20 is also, also divisible by 4, which means that 16 would work, and this would be 16 and 5. And sometimes that just takes a little work to try and figure that out. So I break that down to 16 times 5. Uh, I've seen it written where people will take it and break it down this way as well, so if you prefer that, that's fine. Uh, but then you just start taking some square roots. So the square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 5 is not possible, so that stays underneath the radical, and your final answer is 4 square roots of 5. All right, so on a number like 54, uh, 54 can be broken down if we think about numbers that go into it. Uh, 4 does not go into it. Um, 9 does, so that becomes 9 times 6. So the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 6 cannot be broken down. It stays the way it is, and there you go. All right, take a second. Uh, try example C, pause the video, and come back in just a second. Okay, so for C, we go and look through this. Um, let's just say we weren't sure of the number. So we start with 4. Well, if you take 180 divided by 4, you get 45. Well, 45 is 9 times 5. So I can break it down like that. So I take the square root of 4, I get a 2. I take the square root of 9, I get a 3. And then I got a 5 there um, underneath the radical still. So all of these are being multiplied together. So 2 times 3 is 6. My square root of 5 comes there, and there's your final answer. So that's how these things are broken down using uh, these radical simplifications. All right, next one. Multiplication. Now, we can multiply these things before or after. This is just the converse of the property we just saw. Okay, so we're going the other direction. So if I have a square root of 5, square root of 10, that can be rewritten as the square root of 50. Now, 50 is not a perfect square, so what I've got to do is break that down. And I can break it down to 25 times 2. And the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 2 stays. And there's my final answer. So I can put them back together and then break it down again if I need to. For B, uh, I've got this 6 times 8. Well, 6 times 8 is 48. So I've got the square root of 48. Well, 4 goes into that, but so does 16. So I'm going to break this down to 16 times 3. The square root of 16 is 4. The square root of 3 stays underneath the radical, and there's my final answer. Okay, so again, the 16 turns into the 4, right below it, and then the 3 stays. So that's some of those ways to simplify. Now what we can also do is throw some variables in there. Now when variables get thrown in there, uh, you can look at it the same type of way, and I'm going to show you another method, um, but we just deal with the numbers first. So 90 uh, can become 9 times 10. Now, if you think about it, we're taking a square root. And if my square root of an x squared occurs, I just have an x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break all my variables into as many groups of squares as possible. So you can see here, all of this is still under my radical. So 9 times 10 is 90. x squared times x is x cubed. y squared times y squared is y to the fourth. z squared times z squared times z is z to the fifth. Now the reason I did that is I'm going to start taking my square roots. Well, the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of x, or sorry, the square root of 10 isn't doable. The square root of x squared is just an x. 
and then the square root of x that's still under my radical, not doable. Now here I have two square roots of y squared, uh, which will give me a y squared on the outside. I also have two z squared, which gives me a z squared on the outside. And then what's left underneath is a 10, an x, and a z, and there's your final answer. Right, now another way I've seen this done is when I'm taking a square root, I don't have a number there, but normally I would um, on different larger roots, but you can think of there being a 2 there. That's what's called an index. The index is how many times this particular thing is being multiplied together. Okay, so if I were to take 56, um, we could say that 56 is divisible by 4, which is 14, so I go 4 times 14. Um, the x stays as the x, the y I'm going to leave as a 10 for now, the z I'm going to leave as a 9. So start taking your square roots. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. That's gone. The 14 is going to stay. Square root of x isn't doable. Now, the square root of y to the 10th. Well, if you think about it, again, remember, we kind of have a 2 out here in, in the index spot. Well, 10 divided by 2 is 5. And what that means is I would have 5 groups of 2, or I'd have a y to the 5th that comes out. So that's gone. z to the 9th, if I did 9 divided by 2, that would be a 4. But I wouldn't have all of those being used. That's just eight of them. So I still have that z left on the inside. And so I've got 14, x, z, and there's your final answer. Now that's a little bit tricky. Um, we can go through that in the discussion if we need to. Just uh, make a note of that and let me know it when the time comes. All right. With division, the same property holds true. I can take a division problem and I can split that up. Um, and each one gets their own radical. So over here on the right hand side you see square root of 36 over 49. The 36 and the 49 go in their own radicals. I take those square roots and I get 6 sevenths. Now the thing about this is we cannot leave radicals in the denominator. Okay? It leads us to something called rationalizing the denominator. And When you rationalize you've got to get the square root or the cube root or whatever it happens to be out of that denominator. Alright, so here is how it's done. So we're asked to simplify. Well, if possible, always divide first. So can we simplify 35 over 15? And the answer is yeah. 5 goes into both of them, so this becomes 7 thirds. So now this can be broken up into the square root of 7 over the square root of 3. And I can't simplify any further from there as far as square roots, but I do have this radical in the denominator. And what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to multiply by the square root of 3. Now the reason I can do that is square root of 3 over the square root of 3 is 1. And I can multiply anything by 1. Okay, now when I multiply straight across, the numerator is 7 times 3, which gives me the square root of 21. On the denominator, I have the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is the square root of 9. And the square root of 9 can be reduced down to a 3. I no longer have the radical. And there's my final answer. All right, for B. Let's see what happens here. Well, the 6 and the 12, those can be reduced down. So I've got the square root of y over the square root of 2. Okay, my 6 divided by 12 is 2. Now, once I get to this point, I can multiply by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2, which is just a form of 1. So multiplying my numerator, I have y times 2, which gives me the square root of 2y. In the denominator, I have the square root of 4, which I can simplify down and get a 2. And there's my final answer. That's rationalizing. Okay, give yourself a minute, pause the video, and try C on your own. Okay, for C, um, I cannot simplify anything there, so all I've got to do is go straight to the rationalization. So I multiply by the square root of 8. In the numerator, 3 times 8 gives me the square root of 24n. On the denominator, I have the square root of 8 over the square root of 8, which is just going to be 8. Now, normally we might think we're done, but if you look at 24, 24 has a perfect square that goes into it. It's 4 times 6. Okay, so I'm going to take that 4 and take the square root of it. So the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 6n stays on the inside, and I've got an 8 in the denominator. And now your 2 and your 8 can reduce, so I've got the 6n over 4, and there's your final answer. Now, if you saw that at the beginning, that you have a square root of 8 and knew that that could be reduced, you could do that at the beginning as well. All right. Final topic here is what's called conjugates. 
Now conjugates are numbers in the form a plus the square root of b, a minus the square root of b. And we saw this earlier with the complex conjugates and the imaginary numbers. The conjugates can be used to simplify radicals in the denominator. So here's how it's done. Remember in the last examples, we multiplied by 1. Well, in this example, we're going to do the same thing, except for these are going to be the conjugates. So in the denominator on this first example, I have 5 plus the square root of 2. The conjugate is 5 minus the square root of 2. And now we just multiply. So when we multiply here, we have to distribute. So 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times the negative square root of 2 is negative 3 square root of 2. In the denominator, you have to FOIL. So you go 5 times 5 is 25. 5 times the negative square root of 2 is negative 5 square root of 2. 2 times the square root, or square root of 2 times 5 is plus 5 square root of 2. And then 2 times, or the square root of 2 times the negative square root of 2 is the negative square root of 4. From here, we simplify. Well, the square root of 4 we know is 2. So your numerator, you have 15 minus 3 square roots of 2. In the denominator, those two things cancel. And so I've got 25 minus 2, which is 23, and there's your final answer. No longer a radical in the denominator, and you're done. All right, pause the video, try B, come back and see how you did. Okay, so for B, your conjugate is going to be 3 plus the square root of 7. We multiply, so distribute there, you've got 21 plus 7 square roots of 7. Um, on the denominator, when we FOIL, we got 3 times 3, which is 9. 3 times the square root of 7, so that's 3 square roots of 7. Here you have negative 3 times the square root of 7. And then you have a negative square root of 7 times a positive square root of 7, which is negative square root of 49. Now we know square root of 49 is 7. Those two things cancel. So I've got 9 minus 7, which is 2. And that cannot be simplified any further. There's your solution. All right. Thank you for watching. Um, try these examples. Try your assignment, rather. If you have questions, let me know. And good luck.